So let's go ahead and start out by learning our first recursive algorithm that's super powerful and does something really exciting, which is the binary search algorithm. And we're going to do so by playing a game. Um, now, this is also going to introduce us to a completely new class of time complexity, the log n class. Uh, now, don't worry if you're terrible at logarithms. That's your math teacher's fault, not yours. Um, and that's because uh, I find that the math, the mathematics, they, they, the mathematicians, they focus way too much on the actual, you know, relationship between logarithms and exponents without actually giving the logarithms justice themselves as an as a useful way for calculating stuff, right? Um, so first off, what I want to do is do public. Um, let's go ahead and just play our game. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, you played this game before. I am thinking of a number between one and a hundred, right? And you can probably already guess where this is going. It's got a secret number chosen, and if you and you're going to guess a number, and if it's higher, I'm going to tell you so. Oh, sorry. And if your number is sorry, if my secret number is higher, I'm going to tell you higher. And if my secret number is lower, I'm going to tell you lower. Otherwise, I'm going to tell you you got it. So first thing, um, rather than just like pantomiming, you know, this way through, I'm actually just going to go ahead and make this as visual as possible because you know this. Uh, if you're going to do it the smart way, it's going to require um, some fancy math. Um, not well, not fancy math, but fancy for my. Uh, you know, human brain. So let's go ahead and just uh, write something here. I like to be visual about this. Um, for for i one through one hundred. Print one hundred. Uh, print i. Right, about as unfancy as it's gonna get. So let's go ahead and see. Do 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 do. All right, so there's our 100 numbers, and let's go ahead and move them over here, right? All the numbers from 1 to 100. Now, let's think about, um, now Now you probably thought, okay, so what am I going to do? Um, what's your first guess going to be, right? Guess a number between 1 and 100. I'll tell you whether you're higher or lower until you get it, right? And you probably thought to yourself, let me go ahead and guess 50 or 51. We'll go ahead and just do 50 for the sake of uh, ease right here. Um, right, and why would you guess that? Well, if you guess 50 and you're told that it's higher, then you know it's that you're resulting as a result, you know as a result that if my secret number is higher than 50, then we can throw away all these guys. Essentially, we're left with searching just 51 through 100, which is 50 numbers. Okay, um, otherwise, if you're told that 51, if you're told that it's higher. Then I can race 50 through 100. Right, and I can erase 50 because you guessed 50, so you know it has to be lower than 50, right? And we're left with 49 numbers left, okay? About half as many. So, and I'm, so I'm doing it in this manner because it's pretty visual. So you guess 50, and I tell you my number is higher. So we can immediately throw out half of the numbers that we're, that we're looking at, right? So now we're left with 50. 1 to 100, right? That's the num uh, number that's left. Um, okay, so you're, you've gotten the numbers 50 to 100, so we've immediately, in one guess, reduced the size that we have to search um, in half. So now 51 through 100, right? So we want to, we can do the same trick again. Guess something in the middle, and we'll be able to half it. Um, so around 25, right? There's 15 numbers left, so 25. We'll guess 75, and that makes kind of sense, right? Halfway between 50 50-ish and 100 is 75, right? So you guess 75, and I tell you my number is bigger than 75. So let me zoom out here for a second, right? And if I select all these, hey, it looks like roughly half, maybe slightly more than half, right? And we trim it, and boom, we are left with 25 numbers, right? 76 to Right, 76 to 100. So we have 25 numbers left. One guess, reduced it by half again. So we're now we're down to a quarter of an original size. Halved and halved again. Okay, so 76 to 100. All right. So 
what's the middle of this thing? Well, that's a bit tricky because 25 is an odd number and it doesn't divide cleanly in half. So I'm just going to guesstimate 13 looks about half. So I'm going to go ahead and guess 88, right? Because look, if, it, if it's lower than, if it's bigger than 15, you know, if it's bigger, sorry, if my number is bigger than 13, then hey, I delete the, this yellow portion, right? And if it's smaller than 14, I'll delete this yellow portion. And they both look like they're roughly half, right? I'll end up with 12 numbers that way. Or I'll end up with uh, 12 numbers that way. So hey, that looks like it's the right choice. So we guess 88, right? And I tell you, my number is smaller than 88. So go ahead and delete these. And we're left with 12 numbers, right? So halved, halved, and halved again, an eighth of the original size, right? So now. Uh, we need to guess, let's go ahead and find the number in the middle, right? So this should that be six, I guess, right? One, two, so we have one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's slightly unbalanced, but whatever. So we'll guess six, and we'll guess 81. So we'll say, hey, my number is lower than 81, so we're just going to snip, and we go from six numbers, sorry, from 12 numbers to five numbers. All right. So now we need to guess, OK, is my number, uh, my number is 76, 77, 78, 79, or 80. So I'm going to guess 78. My number is smaller than 78. We're down to two numbers. Which one should we choose? Honestly, it's a crapshoot. I'm just going to go with the smaller one. Oh, and I tell you, it's higher. And we're left with one number, which means that it has to be this number 77, which is the number that I chose. I just wish I had some way to prove it to you in advance. Uh, typically, when I do this in class, I write it behind the um, behind the projector screen so that everybody knows that I'm not doing any shenanigans. But OK, let's go through that. That was cut in half from five. So we cut it from, so we went from, uh, so we were at one, which came from two, which came from five numbers, which was from 12 numbers, which was from 25, which was from uh, 50 numbers, which was from 100 numbers, right? So we had all these numbers, and we were able to get them down pretty quickly by just cutting it in half each time. Um, now that strategy that's employed here is binary search. And we'll get into it in a, in a second. But, the, but what was the runtime of this algorithm? Well, first, let's consider the obnoxious strategy of how to find, some, uh, find the number I was looking for. Right, the obnoxious strategy would have been instead of being in the middle, just to annoy whoever was who proposed this game in the first place. Let's go. Would have been instead of saying, "Is it 50?" So I could cut it in half. Would have been, "Is it one? It's higher. Is it two? It's higher. Is it three? Higher. Is it four? Higher." Um, and so on and so forth, um, until we got to 77. Right. In which case we would have, we would have gone, "Is it 77?" Yes. This isn't a fun game. So um, now, on average, it would take about 50 guesses to get there, as opposed to however many it took for us. Right? How many did it take for us? How many, what, what's the expected runtime if I use this whole uh, strategy of splitting something in half? And the answer is, well, it's um, big O log base 2 of 100. And of course you're going, how in the world do I know that? That's magic. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Logarithms are so complex. No, they're really not. Your math teachers just didn't teach them in an intuitive way. Um, so we'll get into that. But just a quick note of terminology here for the next video. Uh, when I say log, I'm always referring to log base 2 unless otherwise specified. Uh, everybody, other subject, they say log, it's base 10, right? Or maybe natural log in some cases, but here it's always log base 2. In computer science, we always imply log is log base 2, so you always will see this as log, and in computer science classes, you should just, you are safe in assuming that's log base 2, especially if you see it without the O and it's just LG. You can safely assume that that is log base 2, much like this LN is the natural log. Um, all right, so we'll go ahead and just go over what the heck does that mean in the next video.